there are over 600 genes that are involved in hair loss. And only about 20 of them are found on the X chromosome, which is what you get from your, your mother, um, which accounts for about 11% of male pattern baldness is what we're talking about here. If you're a female, it's 50-50 whether it comes from your father or your mother because it's carried. these genes are carried on the X chromosome. It can be slightly slowed with these treatments and, and modifications to your aging rate. Have you ever caught sight of that first gray hair and wondered if it was a sign of inevitable decline? What if I revealed to you that those silvery strands may not be as irreversible as you imagine? Dr. David Sinclair's revolutionary research is illuminating the possibility that we could actually reverse gray hair and perhaps even accomplish even more. You see, there comes a time for all of us when we commence to view the first strands of gray creeping into our hair. It's like a gentle reminder that the years are passing, right? But do you ever stop and think about what happens when our hair changes color? It all starts with tiny cells called melanocytes, the little heroes responsible for granting color to our hair. However, with age, the activity of these melanocytes starts to fall and eventually comes to a complete standstill. When that happens, the hair coming out of your scalp no longer possesses that rich color. Instead, it becomes gray, silver, or white. And then, of course, there's aging involved in this convoluted process. Our DNA, the instruction manual for our bodies, changes over time. More to the point, the actual structure of our DNA, as well as what's known as the epigenome think of it, as a kind of set of on or off switches determining whether genes are on or off starts to change. Yeah, well, it's, it's similar to the center of an earthquake. There are two types of information in the body. We know of genetics. Genetics is the DNA. The epigenetics are the control systems that tell which genes can be switched on and off, which DNA to be looped out and unraveled and read by the cell horses, which genes can be bundled up in silence. And that's the epigenome, the, the reader of the genome. As these changes multiply, the instructions that keep the color in our hair get scrambled, and that gradual bleaching occurs. But here is when things get even more interesting. The stress we sometimes incur can accelerate this process. On the scientific side of things, it has been associated with graying hair. New studies suggest that times of extreme stress cause your hair to gray before it usually would. As we get older, we start to see hair show up in spots we never expected to find it. You will notice them emerging inside your ears, around your noses, and those unstoppable ones in your eyebrows that grow at incredible rates. Dr. David Sinclair has a somewhat interesting theory about the phenomenon. He thinks that this weird hair growth is a vestige from our ancestors of long ago, who were much hairier than we are in this modern age. We've evolved as, as primates, as, as descendants of these apes six million years ago, to show off our age, as particularly as men, because as we get gray, we lose our hair, we become more dominant. We seem to the rest of the tribe, we used to, that we were wiser and we had more in, more influence. These we days- The stronger we made it through the other apes, that's why we look old. Yeah, well, think of the silverback uh, gorilla. That's the dominant one, right? Same with humans. This was a sign that you should be given respect. Not so much these days in our society, it's more about staying younger. But in, in previous times, even just going back a few hundred years, being gray and distinguished was a real bonus. As time went by, humans evolved and lost most of that body hair. But the genetic coding for it did not just disappear. Rather, it stuck into our DNA, just waiting for the right or maybe the wrong moment to pop up again. Dr. Sinclair believes these hairs arise due to changes in the epigenome, those fancy switches that govern what parts of our DNA are on. Yeah, so These switches can get a little bit out of kilter, allowing hair to pop up in places we'd rather it didn't. The really interesting thing is that those very same epigenetic shifts responsible for turning your hair gray are also to blame in this unwanted hair growth. It's akin to a package deal that accompanies the passage of time. The regions of DNA that were meant to remain silent suddenly begin to stir, awakening those dormant hair follicles in unexpected places like your ears. It's an annoying reminder that despite all our modern advancements, we're still carrying around these ancient genetic instructions from a time when hairy ears might have been useful. Here's one that's going to blow your mind. Gray hair might not be so permanent after all. I know, I know that almost sounds too good to be true, 
But Dr. David Sinclair and his team are getting into some pretty groundbreaking research that says we may actually have a shot at reversing gray hair. The whole idea stands on something specifically termed epigenetics. In contrast with irreversible changes in genetic material, the genetic code is set and does not change, as if it were carved in stone, while epigenetic changes are more like switches that can be toggled on or off. These switches control our gene expression, but over time, some of them start to wear out, accounting for things like graying hair. But here is where the exciting part comes in. Because these changes aren't permanent, it could be possible to reverse them. One study by Dr. Sinclair suggests that targeting these epigenetic changes may be able to restore color to gray hair. The theory is that the cells which produce pigment in our hair, the melanocytes we talked about earlier, do not just disappear into thin air. They become dysfunctional first, and then stop working altogether. During this dysfunctional stage, restoration is possible. Theoretically, if we can find a way to restart these cells, we may be able to bring them back from their pigmented graves and get them to start making pigment again. Some very compelling evidence that gray hair actually could be reversed, especially if it's still in its early stages, was seen in a study in 2021. In this experiment, the researchers were able to observe how decreasing stress levels impacted the renewal of the hair's color. It was almost as though, during periods of acute, stressful times, the hair turned gray. When those stresses became less, the hair returned to its previous color. Before we move on, please take a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Over 98% of you watch the videos without subscribing. Imagine what we could accomplish if everyone subscribed. The discovery is monumental because it shows, for the first time, that gray hair can actually get reversed. And more importantly, how stress plays an important role in the aging process. What's more promising still, this is no sort of fluke. Dr. Sinclair and other scientists believe that with the proper treatments, we should be able one day to turn gray hair on its head repeatedly by resetting these epigenetic switches. We're not yet there. These treatments remain in the research stage, but the possibility is very much on the horizon. When we get into the science of maybe how gray hair might be reversed. Now, Dr. David Sinclair's research shines a light on how one might combine several key ingredients, cyclosporin A, minoxidil, and a pigment-boosting drug similar to rapamycin in such a way that just might turn back the clock on our hair. First, there is cyclosporin A, a drug, by and large, recognized as an immunosuppressant usually used to prevent the rejection of organs in transplant patients. But here is the exciting part. Dr. Sinclair's research shows that cyclosporin A has the remarkable ability to restore youth to our cells, particularly by improving the function of mitochondria essentially the very powerhouses that energize our cells. Wholesome mitochondria mean that the cells are much more vigorous. And when it comes to hair, this can mean revitalized melanocytes, those vital pigment-producing cells necessary for maintaining our hair's natural color. Next on the list is minoxidil, a hair loss treatment with which you may be familiar. Minoxidil works its magic by increasing blood flow to the hair follicles, in essence, feeding them the nutrients needed for healthy, robust growth. Commonly used to help fight off thinning hair, in this instance, minoxidil plays a major role in creating an ideal setting for those rejuvenated melanocytes to resume their crucial task at hand coloring our hair once again. The final piece of the puzzle is a skin pigmentation-inducing pharmaceutical that shares a close relation to rapamycin, which has grown famous for its anti-aging properties. Rapamycin and analogs represent an exciting class of drugs because they work partly by mimicking the effects of fasting, forcing a kind of survival mode upon cells. This adversity-mimetic action tricks the cells into thinking it must work harder to survive, which can trigger the processes that maintain their youth and functionality. In the context of hair, this means even aged or quiescent melanocytes can be rejuvenated to produce repigmentation. I know this all sounds pretty incredible, and it's hard not to get excited at the prospect of reversing gray hair with just a couple of treatments. But here's a dose of reality. While this research is extremely promising, it's still in its infancy. The treatment proposed by Dr. Sinclair is not yet ready for large-scale use. Such a cocktail of cyclosporin A minoxidil and the rapamycin-like drug remains under investigation, mostly in in vitro settings, and in a few cases, possibly even early-stage clinical trials. 
Whereas we're not quite at a stage where you can just go out and buy this magic sort of pill to restore your hair color, science is moving in that direction. It offers a tantalizing glimpse into a future where we could have the power not only to halt the advance of gray hair, but to reverse its effects. For now though, it is a journey of watchful patience, one that must travel hand in hand with hope that one day soon these treatments might actually emerge into the world. If we're going to talk about reversing gray hair, you might wonder, what other wonders may this science achieve? The potential ramifications of Dr. David Sinclair's research would seem to go far beyond affecting hair color. This could be a game changer in aging as a whole. Let me take a step back. If we can reverse gray hair through targeting the epigenetic modifications that accompany aging, we open up a whole new world of possibility. These treatments really do become well and truly a lot less about vanity. They quite literally have the desire to renew the cells in our bodies. Put this in your head. If we had taken older melanocytes, those pigment-producing cells, and reset the aging process, what's to say we can't do it with other cell types? The potential with that, of course, is enormous. Just imagine the ability to renew your skin cells, your muscle cells, even cells in your organs. In theory, the same principles that are being used to reverse gray hair could be applied to all the other symptoms of aging. This could mean smoother skin, stronger muscles, and healthier organs. All because we've learned how to reset the clock on our cells. Now, this might sound like science fiction, but we're already seeing the early stages of it in the lab. Researchers are experimenting with ways to slow down and even reverse aging across the body, not just in our hair. The idea is that by treating the causes of aging, a host of old age problems are dealt with prematurely before they have a chance to crop up. Here's where it gets really exciting. Picture a future where you could take a few pills, maybe three as Dr. Sinclair suggests, and not only stop your hair from graying, but also make your whole body feel and look younger. We're talking about treatments that might one day give you thicker, darker hair, smoother, younger skin, and maybe even a sharper mind. It's not just about reversing the superficial signs of aging, it's about the whole body actually becoming younger inside. But let's be realistic, we're not there quite yet. This is research, and it will take some years before these treatments will be available to the public. But the fact that we're even talking about this as a possibility is incredible. It represents the tremendous progress that has been made in understanding the science behind aging and indicates just how close we may be to changing the very paradigm of aging. So what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments below.